Hello students, welcome to the first session of class 12th IP. Let us start the session with a quick review of syllabus for the session 2020-21. So this year CBSE has again revised the syllabus, so let us discuss the syllabus quickly. In previous syllabus, we were having NumPy in class 12th, but this time this topic has been removed. So the first unit will be data handling using pandas and data visualization which will be of 30 marks. So Betty, for this chapter, we must know about NumPy. So I will give you the concept of NumPy first, then we will start this unit. Then um, second unit is database query using SQL, which is of 25 marks. Then third unit is introduction to computer networks, which is of seven marks. Then fourth is societal impacts, which is of eight marks. So altogether, our theory will consist of 70 marks and pros at 30 marks. So altogether, we will have 100 marks. So just now I told you, Betty, that this Python panda, pandas will have some of the concept of NumPy also. So I'm going to give you the important concepts of NumPy then we will start the first unit so if we are talking about numpy then numpy is a module bitty. it is just a module it is a library which have some already written functions in it and those functions are used for all the mat mathematical calculations okay so it provides all the functions for fast mathematical calculations and those com uh, calculations or computations are based on array and matrix. Now, you may ask that what is array, what is matrix? Don't worry, I'm going to discuss all these terms in this session and the coming session today. So basically, let us discuss what is array. Array is collection of homogeneous element. Now, when we are talking about homogeneous element, it means it is same type of data similar data types collection of similar data type is array but it doesn't means that if you will collect the strings if you will collect characters and it will become an array array is totic, uh, totally numerical based numbers okay so if we are collecting some integers then yes it will be an array if we are collecting some floating point numbers, yes, it will be an array, but in no case we can combine both integers and floating point numbers together. If you are having a, an array of integer, it means all the elements must be integer type. If you want to create array of floating point numbers and all the elements must be of floating point types. Okay, so any array consists of two things. First, the elements all the items which is stored in the array and the second thing which is important is index location of an element okay so if you are talking that an array is a collection of element bitty if we want to access a particular element from that collection then we must know what is the location where it is stored in our array okay because it is not necessary that we want to access whole array always it may happen that we want to access a particular element of an array so for that we must know the location of our element and then the next important thing is an array may be of two types bitte. it may be one dimensional which is also known as vector it may be of multi-dimensional in case of multi-dimensional bitte, in our syllabus we have to go through only two dimensional array and two dimensional array is known as matrix now in the diagram you can clearly see bitty this one is one dimensional array since it has one dimension it is two dimensional array since it has two dimensions it is three dimensional array since it has three dimensions okay it has three dimensions so if you are having more than one dimension, then it is known as multi-dimensional. So these two comes under multi-dimensional array. Okay. But in our syllabus, we are going to discuss only two-dimensional array. We are not going to discuss this three-dimensional array. 
so one dimensional array means single dimension two dimensional array means two dimensional okay now let us come to the practical portion that how to create an array so i told you bete to creating to create an array one module is needed and that module name is numpy so numpy is the module which we are going to use in our code to create an array so the very first method i am going to tell you is using array method okay in this session we will learn to create a simple one dimensional array and this method is using array method so bete the first statement should be to import your module just now i told you that jupyter notebook is having this module already but to include that module in your python code you have to write this first statement import then what name of the module numpy as np now why i have written as np bete because while using the functions of numpy we have to write the name of the module also so instead of writing numpy 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 again and again we may use only np because it may happen that the name of the module may be very large and writing it again and again so instead of that we may use an alias name pet name nickname whatever you may call it as so here i am giving you giving numpy Uh, alias name and alias name as np. So the first statement should be the importing numpy module. Okay. So array function is used to create an array from a list. So let us have a list. Okay. And elements of list may be two, three, four, five, six, anything you want. Okay. And let us create our array. i am giving the name as a1 you may give any name to your array but remember it may follow the naming convention rules which is which is already known to you in class 11 so list is having with us and from this list we are going to create an array so how to create array bete the name of the function is array and this array belongs to numpy function and to this numpy we have given a shortcut name np so for that you have to use np dot array within bracket you have to write l1 so let us explain this statement what does it means bete the name of the function which is used to create array is array function since it belongs to the module numpy we have to use name of the module also and it between there must be dot operator which tells that okay array function is coming from the module np and it takes one argument and that argument is our list so our array will be created which will be stored in a1 let us check what we are getting in our a1 array okay so when we will run this code we will have our first array now see 2 3 4 5 6 and the list was this one let me print the list also bete so that you can compare these two now let me run it again okay now see the first one is our array and the second one is our list can you tell me the basic difference between the array and the list yes you are right that in array there is no comma separator in between the collection of items but in case of list all the elements are separated by comma but apart from this we are having one main difference also okay and i told you that a one dimensional array is also known as vector so array supports vector operation vectorized operation now what does it means let me explain it by using example suppose i am writing a plus 2 now what do you think what will happen now this 2 will be added individually to all the elements of the array okay so if the array was 2 3 4 5 6 after performing this vector addition 
the two will be added to individually all the elements of the array so it will become four this three will become five this will become six this will become seven and this will become eight let us check the output what we are getting yes we are getting the same thing but what will happen if we want to do the same operation on our list what do you think what will be the output now this time we will have error since list does not support vector operation so this is the another difference very important difference between list and array the first difference which we are which you are getting uh, by looking through the output is array elements are separated array elements are not separated by comma and list elements are separated by comma and the second but the important difference is array supports vectorized operation while list does not support vectorized operation okay so if uh, let us wrap uh, up for today's session if you are having any doubt regarding this session you may ask in my comment box i will be available uh, from monday to thursday from 11 to 12 11 am to 12 noon and I am giving you one assignment that write python code to create one dimensional array of any 10 even numbers and if if possible you just follow, uh, write all the notes to your classwork notebook and uh, just give me screenshot so that uh, I can know that how many of you are following me so that's all for today thank you for watching me students stay safe stay home. Bye.